Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name's Arnaldo and this is Articulture. Today I'll be talking to you about the difference between succulents and cactus. Succulents are any plant that can store water in its leaves, stems, and roots in order to survive drought. There are more than 50 genus that are included in the succulent categories. Cactus is a subcategory of succulents. That means cactus are succulents, but succulents are not cacti. Succulents include many plant families, including cactus, lithops, aloe, agave, haworthia, gasteria, sansevieria, and most of the euphorbias. Okay guys, so how do I identify cactus from succulents? Most cactus have spines, the bristle-like thorns. The cactus have aerials, and that's where the spines come out of. Uh, without this, a succulent cannot be called a cactus. So the spines grow from the aerials, and the aerials uh, is also where the flowers grow from. So um, the difference between thorns and spines is a thorn is a modified branch and a spine is a modified leaf, which you can see on cactus. Uh, euphorbias have thorns and the thorns grow straight out from the body of the plant. So um, not from an aerial like from the cactus. And as far as the blooms, you can pretty much tell the difference between a cactus and a succulent is that like for instance this euphorbia right here has little blooms has these little tiny little blooms and the cactus i have here an astrophytum in the front which is in full bloom and actually the bloom will open up much more but you can tell the difference because the cactus have really large beautiful spectacular blooms so that is also something that helps you to identify the difference between the two so euphorbias euphorbias is a really large diverse genus of flowering plants. Euphorbias from deserts of South Africa, Southern Africa, and Madagascar have physical characteristics and forms similar to cacti. So such as the crown of thorns, the Euphorbia milii. Um, the crown of thorns is probably one of the ones that can most confuse you as far as how the plant looks because when the plant grows tall i have a couple examples of them for you here this is a beautiful red one when the plant grows really tall then it has the spines i don't know if you could see them there and so it really would make you think it's a cacti or a cactus but it's actually euphorbia so it is a succulent and i want to show you this beautiful pink one and the crown of thorns it's a beautiful pink one crown of thorns comes in such a large variety of colors and different cultivars which are available for you now and they are really beautiful super easy to take care of um, and euphorbias, wow, the euphorbias are such a diverse group of genus of plants. Um, this one right here is a euphorbia geotropha, and it's a really cool, unique plant. It has these large, beautiful leaves. Again, would make you not think it's a euphorbia, but it has these beautiful little blooms, and where the blooms come out, it shoots out these stems, which have these seed pods. They look like a fruit that's on the branch. It's like the coolest thing. And what happens is that the seed pods will develop more and more, become larger, and then they start getting to the point where they start cracking. You can tell because it starts having cracks all around. And then all of a sudden, at some point, these seed pods explode and they shoot the seeds out and it's incredible how nature has created these amazing little things it's like a little seed bomb and it shoots out the seeds in order for it to propagate itself it's incredible what nature has done um so as far as euphorbias um 
These are really beautiful. The Euphorbia Lactea, and this is a variegated one. And this also has little leaves, but it also has the spines. Um, some that are really kind of confusing that make you think it's a cacti are uh, little Euphorbias like this one. This is the Euphorbia Obesa. So pretty, and it, I mean, if you had it with the cacti, I don't see why you would not think it was a cacti. But yeah, that's a little Euphorbia. It has the little ribs and everything, so it makes it look like they have aerials, but they don't. And then this is another Euphorbia here. Also looks just like a cacti with the ribs and just the, the, the structure of it. And it has a lot of little pups coming, a lot of little babies coming. So I'm really looking forward to that. So yeah, Euphorbias, wow. I mean, so beautiful, so amazing in so many different kinds, so many different kinds that you can have in your collection. Um, so, Plants that are succulents that you may not even realize are succulents. Um, the Sansevierias, they're beautiful. They hold the water in the leaves. And what's so great is um, with the succulents and the cacti, um, pretty much my whole plant collection is some form of a succulent plant because it makes it so much easier to care for. It makes it so much easier to care for the plants because you don't have to be watering them all the time. And if you do miss a watering because you go out of town or something like that, they, you know, they can survive the drought and they can take care of themselves for a while. They can hold out for a while. Uh, the beautiful Hoyas, also succulent. Um, this is a gorgeous carrie eye that I have. I had to showcase her again because she's so pretty. And yeah, they have the really thick leaves that store the water. So again, they can tolerate being dry for a while. Another one which probably you may not have thought of as a succulent, the gorgeous ponytail palm. The ponytail palm, in this case, holds the water in the trunk of the plant. And it's actually in the family of the agave family so it's a succulent and again it will also tolerate not being watered that often because it retains the water as well so yeah hoyas and severias i mean they just go on and on aloe is a really really gorgeous succulent and there are so many different types of aloes. I'm really loving aloes more and more as time goes because I'm finding these incredible ones. And aloe is really super tolerant to water drought. Um, an aloe, you could water it like once a month. I actually have an absolutely gorgeous aloe outside. It's full, it's full of tons of little pups. It's just like a ball of little aloes and I don't think I have ever watered her, not once. She lives outside, she gets the rain, obviously when the rain comes, but it hasn't rained in a really, really long time and the plant look exactly the same. So aloes make it super easy for you if you want and really easy to care for a plant. I highly suggest aloes, add aloes to your collection. So I almost forgot to mention in reference to the Euphorbia Jotropha. I actually, because she's had other branches with the seed pods that have exploded. And uh, the first one that exploded, I found the seeds on the ground and then I realized that they were from her. And then what I did after that was I started putting and collecting the seeds. I started putting these little um, mesh bags. They're like for jewelry. They're like these little see-through mesh bags. They have like a ribbon that you pull. They're perfect because you just put it around, you tie the little ribbon, it doesn't hurt the plant at all. And when the seed pods explode, then you're able to collect all of the seeds. And I wanted to show you because I planted the seeds. I collected about a dozen seeds and I planted them. And I wanted to show you, I swear it's only been a few days, maybe at most a week, but I wanted to show you the little baby Jatrofitas. Look at this little one right here. I have a couple more coming out here and I actually have a few more outside. So yeah, in a few days I already have little babies. I'm gonna have a lot of Jatrofas. So I'm going to need to share those with a lot of other people, but it's such a beautiful plant. I didn't want to just let the seeds go to waste. And I, um, I guess that when you have plants for a long time, 
at some point you want to start growing them yourself from seeds and trying it out. It's an, it was an experiment and I'm sure they're going to do great and I'm going to love having extra ones. Okay, so cactus. Um, I love my cactus so much. I keep adding to my collection and the more that I add to my collection, the more I love them. And um, this one right here is my beautiful blue sky cactus. It's uh, one of my newest additions to my collection. This gorgeous uh, Apuntia right here is a sunrise Apuntia and it has gorgeous variegation. So I just wanted to bring it closer to show you guys how pretty she is absolutely gorgeous um, and lately I've had these amazing blooms come out on my cactus uh, like the beautiful astrophytum right here who has bloomed this is actually the second bloom this spring so once the flower dropped it started come it started shooting a new flower absolutely gorgeous um, I have here a Gymnocolysium that I want to show you and this is actually the third time it's going to bloom for me so I'll show you these right here are new blooms and there are more coming out and they're coming out of the aerials as you can see these what look like blooms were flowers that I pollinated so I actually took a brush and I pollinated from another cactus that was blooming this one right here and I pollinated all of the flowers and now what has happened is that the flowers are starting to turn into seed pods and I'm going to be able to propagate them and have seeds to plant. So I'm super excited to be able to plant um, cactus seeds because um, I have had issues with ordering cactus seeds online i think i've done it three times even from like where i thought it was somebody that was trustworthy like amazon i ordered the seeds and then when i've grown them they've been <laughs> they've been weeds so they were not cactus that's for sure and uh yeah i've wasted money on that and so i'm so happy to be able to actually get seeds from my own plants and grow them and it's going to be really really fun to see the little babies grow and i'm going to show you this little cute guy right here if you see right here this little red fruit and i have a whole bunch that i have propagated from this plant those are seed pods and i've actually dried some of them out and recently planted them so as soon as the little plants start growing I will be showing you them and again I'm like really excited for that process of being able to grow my own cacti um, so this one right here is an example of this is the old man cactus of a type of cactus that doesn't have spines from the arrows it has like this soft little fuzz and yeah, it's like a fur, so it almost looks like hair. And I'll show you this cute little round one right here, this little furry little globe, this little ball, so pretty. But yeah, there's so many different kinds of cactus available, so beautiful. Um, and again, you know, they're so easy to take care of, they store the water, and yeah, it makes it really easy and a really enjoyable process to have them in your collection. So the cactus is a family comprising of 127 genera with some 1,750 known species. Many smaller cacti have globe-shaped stems giving them the highest possible volume of water storage. Um, I hope that this video helps you understand the differences between succulents and cacti. I hope it also inspires you to add more to your collection. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next episode. Thanks for watching.